Do you want to find love for who and what you already are? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> yeah, you know that song? That song used to actually make me not love the guy that sang it. But what is love? Love is that feeling that resides within ourselves of patience, kindness, long-suffering. They talk about it in 1 Corinthians a little bit about what love is and those ideas that we give and extend to others, we also must give to ourselves. And in fact, we need to go there first. You got to really, really love yourself and the depths to which you love yourself are the depths to which you can receive that love within yourself from others. So love yourself deeply. Figure that out. Know how to feel and emanate that joy that you carry for yourself outward. Our emotions carry a resonance, a vibration within them. And when you are with somebody who resonates at the level of love, you can feel it, can't you? You can feel when your mom loves you and hugs you and invites you into the home to feed you again as you visit it or however that happens, that person in your life that loves you. When you feel that, it's something you recognize. Feel that for yourself. Turn that inward. So in order to do that, you first must understand your self-worth. No matter what happens in your life, no matter where you are in the space that you're in, you have intrinsic value and worth because of your humanity. So if you're sitting here thinking, you know what, my place in life is not where I want it to be. I've missed my boat. You know, I missed the starting gun. I am way behind. I should be here and I'm here instead. And you're beating yourself up, not loving yourself. Stop with the comparison. Stop with all of that and just recognize you are worthy of love because you are human. That is a full stop. You can be a junkie in a ditch or the Dalai Lama or God himself, or I guess not God if you're a Christian because uh, he's the guy that'll love you no matter what, regardless of who you are. And you have that in you to be loved no matter what. So what can you do if you are struggling to feel that love for yourself and you don't know where it comes from? Really, the answer is to believe in something bigger than you. Believe that there is something greater than your world that is believing in you and that needs you. And that will, that will allow you to love yourself for your worth there. And even if you're an atheist, you can do this. Einstein was asked whether, if he could ask one question, what would it be? And he said he wanted to know whether the universe was friendly or not. And he said, and I believe that the universe is friendly. That was his belief in that answer to that question, but he wished he knew. It's a hard answer to know. So whether you believe in a God, whether you believe in the universe, whether you believe in nothing at all, there must be some, that, that nothing like a God or kind of power, there must be something that you believe bigger than yourself. And there was a decathlete who was running in the Olympics. He's the greatest decathlete of, the, of our time. He had set the world record. He was in the Olympics for the third time, and he was in the final race of the decathlon. And if he was to run the 1500 meter race at the slowest he had ever run in his career, he would still win the gold medal but he wanted to break the world record, which he held himself. And he had to finish that 1500 meter race and take off time, I believe it was over a second of time from his best time that he had ever run it. So he had to beat his own speed at a record never touched and he already owned the world record. This would seem insurmountable considering the fact that he could run this race as slow as he wanted and still win the gold. Where was he gonna get the motivation to face the pain and agony that that race was going to require in order for him to beat his own time by over a second? This is where I learned the power of belief from this story. This man, as he ran the race, he was an atheist, he pictured the children that were watching him on TV at home, watching the Olympics, because when he was a boy, he had watched the Olympics and been inspired by the athletes that he witnessed performing these amazing feats of strength and skill. And as he watched, that inspired him to become an Olympian 
and become the greatest decathlete that we've seen. It was this this thought that he carried with him in his mind as he was coming around and the burn and the agony of the lactic acid building in his muscles was screaming for him to slow down as his lungs were filled with oxygen deprivation and he's dying and huffing. He buckled down and kept up his pace and he broke the record. He beat his time. He set a new world record in a time that was faster than he had ever run in that last race by relying upon a belief that he might inspire some children watching him at home. So I don't care what it is that you believe in, but believe in something bigger than you so that when things get hard, when things are really, really tough, you can move into that space knowing that these people need you. And that is the essence of love, that you are willing to put yourself on the line to lift others around you, that there is some greater purpose in what you're doing beyond the simple act of just doing it for yourself. This is what drives us in those darker moments. This is what allows you to love yourself and say, I can do this, because you think there's something greater that serves others and it becomes an exchange of love that builds upon itself. So what is love? Love is that ability to accept who you are with all compassion, love the good and the bad together, and emanate that feeling that you feel for yourself to others. If you can stand in that place holding all that you are, that will be a powerful thing and it'll make you a person that is very pleasant to be around. So dive into love, find it, feel it, so one of the things that maybe we want to discuss uh, in contrast, because I'm talking about people that are struggling with low self-worth and, you know, really trying to embrace that part of their, their themselves that says, hey, I'm worthy of being loved. I am loved. I love myself and I love others. It's kind of a chain of reaction that we have to carry within ourselves when we approach from a feeling of unworthiness. Sometimes there's people that approach this, what am I? How do I feel love from a place where they think that they are the shit? I am all great. I'm so good. And they think they're so awesome, but they're ignoring the parts of themselves that are not awesome. This is not, in fact, real love. This is bravado. This is maybe narcissism <laughs> when it gets too bad, right? Uh, these are the things that hit you when you act that way without a full comprehensive sense of who you are. So what you need to do is start practicing self-compassion. If you are somebody that thinks, I am great no matter what, it doesn't matter, and that is the narrative that you have within yourself, it makes me think of Shakespeare when he says, methinks thou dost protest too much, <laughs> right? When you are acting with that level of bravado and it signals to everyone, what are you actually hiding? Now, there are some people that will be taken in by your conviction to how much you love yourself to the exclusion of all negative things in the world that could possibly tarnish that image. But many people will recognize there's a weakness there. You're not comprehensively seeing who you are. You are not aware of the fact that you are full of good and bad attributes. And loving the whole comprehensiveness of yourself is what creates that residing powerful space. What Brene Brown calls your sacred ground it is that balance of I like my good, I like my bad. Holding them together is the hardest part and that is the space where your love truly emanates because you have practiced loving not only what's good about yourself but what is also your weaknesses because they're worth loving. They're what make you who you are and in order to do that if you're caught feeling fearful of admitting weakness and only saying, no, I'm all good, this is great, I'm powerful, and ignoring those places within you, it is time to get over that fear. Start considering who you really are. Imagine speaking to yourself about the weaknesses that you have and loving yourself for them. Imagine that time when you fail, those places where you fall down and you don't succeed, practicing kind words and say, hey man, it's okay. It's okay, you messed up. This is a tough area for you. This always hits you hard. It's okay, we're gonna try again and look at this. That will diminish that fear that is within you that is causing you to really swing too far to one side of the coin of 
puffing up and saying I'm great and ignoring the places where you're not great. So depending on where you're at on the pendulum, look and move at this practice of knowing what is love and how you can have it for, your, for yourself and emanate that by swinging toward the space that you need to identify more and then holding the whole package of who you are. You're good, you're bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? That's an old movie that I love with Clint Eastwood. But you want to hold it all. And then when you're there, that is the real power that love has to emanate from you. If you do these things, you'll be singing what is love and laughing because you'll know. Baby, don't hurt me no more. Thanks for joining me. I'm James.